Hello and welcome to my studio. I am so happy to be tuning in live again with you after a couple of weeks of being away, working on a contract with a publisher. It's a dream come true. I'm so happy about this. Uh, they reached out to me, uh, Quarto Publishing, and they asked me to illustrate a full calendar in a kawaii style. So that's 13 full pages and it was awesome to do this. And the calendar will go on sale in August this year. Uh, and I'll email you and let you know when and how you can get a hold of it if you like to. But today, uh, we are going to draw this cute Totoro. And I, you know, uh, it's been so much requested to do a watercolor tutorial that I said, of course, let's do a watercolor tutorial. And of course, live streaming and watercolor have challenges because watercolor takes forever to draw, uh, to dry, especially where I live right now. I'm in Australia. Uh, it's almost winter and it's freezing cold. So it will probably take half an hour for the watercolor to dry before I can draw over it again. But so I was telling my friend about this and I said, man, how am I going to do this live stream with watercolor? And she said, you know what? Just do two versions, right? One where you demonstrate and one where uh, it's already dried and you can continue. Brilliant. Thank you, Victoria. If you're listening, thank you so much. That is so smart. So that's exactly what I did. Well, with that being said, I have recently uh, this week sent you a question of whether you prefer to see these tutorials live like we're doing now or uh, if you're, you know, or if I should pre-record them here in the studio and just publish them every week, uh, you know, or as often as I can. Uh, and, you know, e almost everyone said that they prefer the tutorials to be pre-recorded and pre-produced. They don't make have a chance to tune in live anyway. So that's what I'm going to do. And so then these things like doing watercolor demos becomes more of a reality because I can just, you know, pause the camera, let the paint dry, flip it on again and continue the tutorial. You don't have to sit through it. I don't have to prepare two different drawings. So it kind of is a win-win and that makes sense. So, uh, but I still like hanging out with you live like this. There's something really special about tuning in live. Um, so to, to do this, the plan is to have once a month a live Q&A session where you specifically come to ask questions and I'll answer them and maybe do a demo. I don't know. It depends on the question, right? So that's the plan. Let's see. Uh, and now, uh, if you're tuning in, say, hey, I'm going to check the comments. Let me see. Figuring out all this tech. Okay, Christine Ang has joined. Hi, Christine. Cool. Now, as I'm doing the demo, uh, if you have questions, put them in. If, I don't know whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, put them in, in the chat. Uh, I'll be able to, I should be able to see them uh, as um, as they come in. Let's see. So I'm going to start doing the drawing demo and then take it from there. Uh, Barbara says, hey. Uh, oh, Mari, sorry if I'm saying it wrong, says hello. Yay, thank you for tuning in. Ready to draw? Okay, let's do this. So, here is my watercolor setup. Uh, looking a little bit dark, is it? Let me let me just correct it a little bit. Okay, I think I can make it a little bit brighter. Yeah. Okay, that looks better, doesn't it? Okay, let's do it. So I will be using 
Um, I, you, you can see that I've taped here a piece of watercolor paper. I, you know, there's watercolor paper and watercolor paper. I really love using Arches watercolor. This one is a little bit thin. It's 185 GSM, but I like to use 300. Uh, that's, that's, that would be my preference. It's a little bit thicker. And what happens is when you have good watercolor paper, you can do a very even wash. Um, and the paper can hold the paint very well without drying out on the, on the edges. Uh, I think I would say if you're going to invest into anything um, related to watercolor, invest in good paper. The paints don't matter as much. The brushes don't matter as much, but watercolor paper really makes a huge difference. And I taped it down because once I start putting the water wash over it, the paper, if I don't tape it down, it'll start to buckle. And because the water, uh, the paint is wet and it's creating little puddles, if the paper buckles, you'll have like these little pools of dark paint everywhere, which also is not a great idea. Well, okay. So let's start with the drawing. I'll move my palette, I'll move it back later. Um, so basically a lot of kawaii is either starts out as an egg or a, or, or a sphere or a ball. So like, uh, look, I'm gonna draw really dark so that you can see, but if you're drawing at home, do not draw it so dark because it'll be really hard to erase later. So this is my middle line. Uh, I almost always start with the middle line because that gives me ability to to see symmetry, to keep my character looking the same on the left side and the right side. So I'm drawing kind of like an egg shape. It's not perfect. And you know what? We have an eraser and we can always correct it. So here's the egg shape. And now to make it into a Totoro, Totoro is known for his big puffy belly. We're just gonna like, imagine if you were to stretch out these parts, this bottom section. So kind of like, I guess I'm like making it go straight. And then he's got these feet. They're kind of like claws, I guess but you can think of it as a triangle, as a flat triangle like that. And it's really important to keep the bottom section flat, not curved, because that will ground the character and make it look like it's really standing on the ground and not about to fall over, which makes it look comfortable to the viewer. So keep this bottom section straight. And now we are going to uh, define the, the fingers or the claws. So here's the belly connecting and then just like wavy lines. Look, that's it. Just like that. And you have a total foot. One, two, three, and connect. Okay, and then the belly, the lines that we did before, connect to the feet as well. And if you have extra lines, no problem. That's why we have an eraser. We're just going to erase it out. Okay, this one is looking a little bit too, too unsmooth, so we smoothed it out. Okay, now let's draw Totoro's belly in the middle. It kind of looks like a heart. That's, you know, that those are the shapes that define the Totoro character. So, and kind of going along our egg shape, just like that. If you have questions, pop them in the comments uh, so that I can answer them in this session. Otherwise, we're going to be doing these videos pre-recorded from now on and a live Q&A each month instead. Okay, 
So here is the belly. You see, I'm, it's kind of like I'm sculpting in clay. I put down a line and then I say, does this look right? I evaluate it. And if it doesn't, I just, you know, I correct it. I keep like molding and shaping this character until it looks, <clears throat> has the expression that I have in my mind. So it's really not a problem to, to have multiple uh, goes at it, to, to do it in <clears throat> multiple passes. Uh, so now we're going to put the ears. So you see, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of mark out the direction that the ears will go. And that will help me now that I'm going to be putting the ears, it helps me to have this base. And the ears look like little mushrooms, I guess, or like a rump shape on a leg. See, this is a, a rhombus, rump, rhombus, I don't know. And then it has a narrow base to it like this. Same on the other side. Now, because I have this line, this uh, vertical line, this slanted line, it tells me how far to go and under what angle. And as I'm drawing the shape, I don't have to think about that. So I can only focus, I can just focus on drawing the, the shape rather than the angle or the height of it. So that really helps. You know, give yourself every chance you have to get the best drawing, right? Like use all the tools. So now we're going to do the, the hands and the hands are like this kind of puffy little uh, sausage shapes. I don't know, something like this. Look, Totoro pretty much doesn't have a neck like that. And then notice how here in this section, I went over the belly. I, I cut into the belly with the, with the arm and that will help us get the illusion of three-dimensionality, like make the character look uh, like it's, it's real. It's not just a picture on the paper because it, it makes you see how the arm is cutting into the belly, like it's lying on top of the belly. So it's a good idea to overlap shapes to create the, the, the illusion, the, that three-dimensional look. And now we're going to do this arm, and this arm is holding a leaf, so it needs to be bent. But uh, to get it look realistic, look, I'll show you a trick. First of all, I need to make sure that it starts on the same line as this arm. So I'm drawing this imaginary, well, not so imaginary here, but it would be imaginary line to the other side to indicate to me where does the arm start now and where would it end if it was straight so then the hands are symmetrical the arms are symmetrical so i could even mark out the hand like this if it wasn't bent and now i need to bend it right and the bend starts about here so i'm gonna say to myself okay here's the bend and because it's bent, this corner on the bottom is going to pull up a little bit, right? Because when you bend the elbow, it goes up a little bit. So I'm just going to cut it off like this and erase the extras and erase the extras. And then I will evaluate and see if it looks correct or not. Okay. I would say that it's pretty good. It looks a little bit small to me, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger compared to this other arm. A little bit puffier. Because kawaii is all about being puffy and rounded. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. So uh, I have my position of the arms. Now let's do the face, <laughs> the funnest part. So roughly, I would say halfway between the, the line of the arm and uh, the top of the head. 
And again, you see, I'm drawing a guideline to tell me where to position the eyes. Because when you draw one eye and you go to draw the other one, very often one will be higher, one will be lower. So you you, you want to like make it as easy as possible for yourself and just create your like create guides and erase them later. And then measure off the central line. So I'm moving to the left and to the right about the same distance. Although now I look at the character and it doesn't look right. It just doesn't. So I'm going to do it again. Maybe they need to be further apart. Yeah, that looks about right. So here's my guideline still there, but I shifted the eyes down a little bit. And now the nose is in between the eyes and it's like a, a little flat rounded triangle. So Totoro is said to be a cross or not a cross, but a blend between a cat and a bunny. So here's the nose and it's got whiskers. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Uh, and then what for the mouth, you know, I gave my daughter this cheeky little playful mouth, but you can also give it like the classical Totoro big smile with the teeth coming out, um, smile, mouth. And then for the eyes, you know, I noticed that Totoro is actually slightly cross-eyed and that's what gives this character this really kind of goofy, but lovable look. So the, the eye the center of the eye is just ever so slightly shifted towards the nose. So he's a little bit cross-eyed. So there's the expression of the Totoro. Oh, Christine says that she cannot hear me. Can you guys hear me? Can you let me know if you can hear me? Okay, I'll go on, but can you pop in the comments uh, whether you can hear me or not? Yes, okay, you can hear me, awesome, fantastic. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, another thing that makes Totoro Totoro is these, these markings on his belly right here. They are like upside down V shapes. Okay. So now that we have the drawing ready, oh wait, we don't have a leaf. Okay, so here, uh, let's just go up like that from the arm. Imagine the arm is holding the leaf like that. And then uh, I chose to give him a very little playful leaf and it kind of makes it comical that this, this giant lovable character has a tiny little leaf like this it's kind of like he's trying to hide from the rain maybe but it's tiny so it makes it funny so you see I'm, I'm drawing a heart shape but lying down flat something like that now as I was checking the comments I saw that Linda Pulinzi is tuning in and that is so special to me Linda Pulinzi was my first watercolor teacher and she was the one who gave me the experience of believing in myself as an artist so thank you Linda for tuning in and for being who you are say hey <laughs> okay so now we've got uh, the character down and look I'm I'm using a kneaded eraser as you know I'm a big fan of it uh, oh I don't know why Christine cannot hear me maybe put the volume up just give me one second okay 
So I'm using a kneaded eraser to, to erase out most of the pencil lines. So when I put the paint down, it's not showing through. And I like this eraser because it doesn't damage the surface of the paper too much. Uh, unlike an eraser that is plastic. And it just lifts out enough pencil lines that I can see through. Look, I'm not going to erase everything. If I was doing this as an artwork, I would erase it so that you almost cannot see it. But for the sake of the video, I want you to still see what I'm painting. So... Okay, now let's get to the fun part of painting. Uh, okay, so we the, the Totoro character, let's look at our example, uh, is mostly gray. And um, you can see it's like, we imagine that the light is coming from this side. Uh, so we're going to be going light to dark. However, I don't want it to just be a gray, like a flat gray. So first of all, I'm going to mix up my own gray paint. And to do that, I'm going to use a kind of a brownish yellowish color so this one I think this is a burnt umber you can see it's kind of like on the orange scale right if you if you were to say like is this a red or a green or a blue it's more like a yellowy orange and I'm gonna use a blue like a warm blue called an ultramarine blue See, this one is kind of like a purpley blue. And when I mix those two together, the blue and the orange are opposite. So they are going to make up a gray. So I'm doing it on paper. You see, it's kind of like a warm gray, but it's interesting gray because it has different variations. Uh, and I'm going to do it right here on a palette. Like, look, normally my palette does not look this clean, but I cleaned it out so I can show you the whole process from the beginning. Like, normally I would leave little pieces of paint and just pick up next time from the same place. But I cleaned it out so you can see how I do it from the beginning. So picking up a bunch of paint and putting it here. I'm using a number I'm using a round brush I think it's a number four round brush doesn't really matter the brush too much as long as it can hold a bunch of paper uh, water okay now I'm gonna add the blue and mix them up and what that will do is it'll create a nice gray but it won't be just a flat one color gray it'll have little variations and specs and I'll let the paint mix on the page as I'm doing it. So look, I'm testing it here on the page and it looks looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Kind of grayish. And then I know that on the left side, when it goes into the shadow, I want it to go a little bit purpley. So I'm going to take that same blue, ultramarine blue, and put it on a palette. And then I'm going to add to it uh, a red alizarin crimson so that it creates a purple so blue and red mix them up create purple this looks too red I'm gonna add blue and I'm just gonna let it sit here and wait until I need it and I'll like mix the gray and uh, the purple together okay so I've got a paper towel to dry my brush if there is too much water I've got a small brush for later let's see this is a number four this must be a number eight then round brush for doing the details but the trick with watercolor is to light like to put all of your paint in one pass if you can because if parts of the color start to dry and then you touch it again with a wet brush it'll create this frayed edge uh, that you might not want so use the biggest brush that you you know are willing to do <laughs> uh, like this looks way too big for this little drawing however I'm gonna go for it because it'll make it so much easier for me 
to cover the entire drawing. So I'm picking up a bunch of this gray mix, testing it on the page, looks about right, bunch of water, make it wet, like really wet, and I'm just gonna go for it. Okay. It's pretty light, however, this is the side that is light on the character, so I'm not really going to add too much paint to it because I want there to be a contrast between the, the light side and the dark side. And the trick, like the main thing is to use lots and lots and lots of water so that it doesn't dry out. So what we're doing right now is uh, painting on the dry paper. I'll show you later for the leaf on how to do what they call what is called wet and wet, wet into wet. Um, but right now we're going straight into the dry paper. Lots of water. Make it wet. You can see why it takes half an hour for my drawing to dry, right? And also notice that I'm going from the right side, then I'm going to the left side. I'm constantly, I, I constantly keep this water edge moving wet because I don't want it to dry out. I always want it to stay wet. Painting around the eyes because later I want to fill them in with white. Well, not fill them in, I want them to stay white. Now, as I'm getting closer to the left side, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I'm going to start to add a little bit of purple, like I mentioned before, you see, because this is the shadow side and I want it to be darker and I want it to be more interesting. Like I'm actually going to let the paint flow out and mix up like this. And make it darker like I'm gonna allow it to go darker on this side for two reasons first to create that three-dimensional look second is because I'm planning to add uh, to add white accents on top and to for them to show up I need the character to be a little bit darker so now I pick up this wet spot on the foot and just continue Like you don't have to be perfect with your paint because we're going to be outlining this with a thick black outline which will give you a chance to correct the lines and might actually look make it look a little bit interesting if the paint is not filling up the entire space. So now I also I'm going to drop a little bit of purple accents onto the other side right here just to make the hand look a little bit three-dimensional like that. So that's my wash, you can say. <laughs> now for the leaf, we're gonna do wet into wet. Um, I'm taking my little brush because this leaf is really, really tiny and I'm gonna wet the page. Like, look, I'm just gonna wet the page with clear water like this. Not too much in this case because we're going to be dropping wet paint into it, but enough so that if you look at it sideways, it shines. Now I'm going to take uh, green paint just straight out of the tube. I think this is a sap green uh, here. Hope you can see. Okay, so I, I loaded my brush with green paint and I'm going to go around like along the edge here and drop it in and you see how it's starting to flow and spread but I'm not going to like spread it everywhere because I want it to stay um, a little bit interesting and varied. I'm actually going to pull out a little bit from the center because it ran too much which is perfectly fine. You can always correct it. That's the thing about watercolor people are uh, you know, it's normal to be worried because it's hard to correct, but you can correct more than you know Because you can just and that's where having good paper comes in too because when you have good paper It can take a lot of washes look what I'm doing now is I'm uh, I loaded the brush again with green paint and I'm just cleaning up the edges making them a little bit darker and more expressive 
and while it's wet you could even like drop in some yellow if you want so I'll pick up a little bit of yellow you see like I'm letting yellow and green mix on a page and that creates this really interesting variations so now what I would do is let it dry so fast forward half an hour here is a drawing that I created uh, yesterday I'm gonna take this one off and let it dry and pretend that we're continuing because I want to show you the entire process so here's the dry version and you can kind of see it's it's a little bit the paint has gone a little bit lighter and a little bit flatter and if you wanted to you could even go through it again and put like another layer of gray here um, I won't do that right now uh, so to outline it I'm going to use a sharpie and I'm going to use a uh, Sigma graphic pen one which is a little bit thick to do the eyes and the, the little details let's do the details first so I'm just going over my pencil lines here And the nose, little flat triangle, and the mouth, and the whiskers. And let's do the leaf right away since we're at it. It's kind of growing. You could do this one green if you wanted to. I'm just doing everything in black outline to be consistent. So the the belt the outline of the belly will also be in this thinner pen. And then the arm, you see how I just made it overlap? You see how I made this line go above the belly? This will make it look three-dimensional. I'm, not, I'm gonna stop here because I'm gonna use a thick outline for the outside. Just gonna go straight to the other side. Okay. And if you can, turn your drawing so that it's comfortable for you. Okay, you see I deliberately left the outside outline undone because I'm going to take a thick Sharpie marker and do the outside outline really thick, which is characteristic of the kawaii style to make it look flat and graphic. So here my thin line and thick line meet and I just... I just kind of stop on the edge and turn directions like that. Okay. Almost there. I like this uh, combination of watercolor and line work. It just it makes it look interesting, like a contrast. 
between the different mediums. So there's our outline is done. And what remains to do now is to add these white accents. You see how this character kind of pops and comes to life. Oh, and the cheeks. Uh, because we, we put in white accents and I'll tell you what, where and how I put them and why. And let's do the cheeks too. So just going to take a little bit of that red that we had from before and draw little ovals. Cheeks are always nice in my opinion. Not always, but a lot of the times they they make the character look adorable. So there are the cheeks. taking out some of the pencil lines and now for the white like I would say you can use a white gouache or a white acrylic paint I've got this thing called a copic opaque white medium but I really think it's just acrylic paint really so I'll use it I it looks like a thick white base oh my paint my brush is dirty with red not a good idea so I'm just going to pick up a bunch of white and put it on a palais so it's not too thick. Okay, so why do we add these white, white dots and how to add them? Uh, if, if, if you imagine a rounded ball standing in a lit environment, the light from the outside will bounce onto the ball and collect around the edges and, and that makes it look really effective. So. If in doubt, go along an edge. And I do it on the dark side because if you do it on the light side, you really won't see it. So look, I'm going along the edge, not, not on both sides, only on one side. And putting in this white shine, which is showing the light bouncing off the environment onto your character. It's really simple, isn't it? And you do it right before the black outline. So that contrast of black, white, and then your dark color really looks stunning. And, and don't overdo it. You know, less is more when it comes to highlights. My, my art teacher used to say you should only have one, one highlight in the whole drawing. Uh, and on the light side, I'll still add a little bit. Add a little bit but less than on the dark side this just to keep it consistent that the character is rounded on both left and right side you see but you don't see it as much on the light side because the paint is lighter and then get a little bit more paint and so I'll also add a bunch of little shines and sparkles around the character because you can imagine the light bouncing everywhere and like literally it sparkles um, like little dots little shines maybe little shiny areas uh, in kawaii you also often see like these little crosses which is like a sparkle you can do dots just kind of randomly because he's magical all around. Uh, maybe on the ears. Little dots. And you can use a combination of crosses and dots. But don't overdo it. Stop before, stop before you think you need to. Like, you know, it's so addictive. I could keep going, really. But I won't. <laughs> I won't. That's it. We're done. We're done. I'll take questions now if you have any questions. Put them in the comments and I'll go check them now. Okay, I'll take comments from Facebook first, then from YouTube if there are any. Okay, let's see. Uh, let me switch the cameras. Ha. 
hi again. Okay. So Ari says, what kind of paper are you using? So I'm using Arches watercolor paper. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it's 100% uh, cotton. I, my favorite is 300 GSM. So it's like really thick. Uh, GSM stands for grams per square meter. So basically the higher the number, the thicker the paper and the more expensive. So you know what? Like watercolor paper is expensive, but it lasts for a long time. I've had this watercolor pad for about a year because every time I do a drawing, it's a, I only use half a page. Like you see, half a page. Uh, so if you're going to invest into anything when it comes to watercolor, I would say paper makes a huge difference, the biggest difference. Um, so Arches, watercolor, 300 GSM, and I use medium smooth because uh, they have it like really, really smooth or really, really rough or medium. I like medium so you can see texture, but it's not too much because my drawings are not so big. Okay, uh, Mary also asked what kind of paper are you using? And I just replied to that. Thanks for that. Um, so I'm gonna check the YouTube comments. Nobody on YouTube is saying anything, so that's cool. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, drawing of this character. Uh, watercolor demo is fun we're kind of running really long today so from now on i'm going to be pre-recording these tutorials and we'll do uh, a live q a session you know every month more or less uh to to really ask your questions uh oh you know you can also comment on the videos that i post and i'll be able to answer like what kind of paper you're using or anything like that um, yeah, so let's keep talking. Let's keep creating. Uh, if you haven't yet signed up to my free mini course, go to tatianadenis.com. Uh, you can get a free mini course that will teach you how to draw your own kawaii doodle. And thank you so much for, for tuning in today. Uh, I'm really, I really enjoy doing live sessions because it's like we're hanging out together. Uh, so I will see you again soon. Let's, you know, let's keep going. Let's keep creating. Bye for now.